Thank you all for joining us for this press conference on how the widespread use of high quality rapid testing in Africa can revolutionize the continent's response to COVID-19. I'm very pleased to be joined in this conversation by Professor Abdullahi Toure, the Director General of the National Institute of Public Health in Guinea. Bienvenue, Monsieur le Professeur. And uh, Dr. Susan Ndide Nabada, who is the head of the National Health Laboratory in Uganda. Welcome, Dr. Susan. African countries are gearing up to introduce antigen-based rapid diagnostic tests on a large scale. And this will be a game changer, we think, in the fight against COVID-19. These high quality rapid tests will help meet the huge unmet need for testing in Africa. While there are testing challenges in many parts of the world, we've seen that African countries have faced a significant gap throughout the, the pandemic. For example, Senegal has significantly boosted its testing capacity but it still has testing 14 times less than the Netherlands. Nigeria is testing 11 times less than Brazil. In Africa, countries are mostly conducting PCR tests, which require laboratories, even if they are mobile labs, as well as reagents and experts, leading to a concentration of testing capacity, mainly in the capitals or in large cities. The new rapid tests are easy to use, cheaper than the polymerase chain reaction or the PCR tests and provide the results in under 30 minutes, enabling countries to decentralize testing and speed up the turnaround time for results to quickly reach, identify, test, and isolate contacts of positive cases. Currently, most African countries focus the use of their stocks that they have of, of testing kits on testing travelers, patients or contacts, and we estimate that a significant number of cases are still being missed. With rapid testing, authorities can stay a step of uh, COVID-19 ahead by scaling up active case finding in challenging environments like crowded urban neighborhoods and communities out in the countryside. Rapid community surveys can be done in areas where the virus might be circulating to confirm and quickly intensify surveillance and other public health measures. Globally, 120 million of these tests are being made available to low and middle income countries through the WHO Act Accelerator Coalition. In Africa, the Global Fund, Unit Aid, FIND and the Africa CDC have linked up to distribute the tests and we greatly appreciate the partnership of these uh, agencies. WHO is working hand in hand with countries by sending out key policy and operational guidance documents, developing a training package, and deploying experts in the field to support the rollout of these tests. Turning then to the COVID-19 situation, there are now more than 1.67 million cases on the African continent and 40,400 people who've sadly lost their lives. In the WHO African region, which is mainly sub-Saharan Africa as well as Algeria, we have had 1.27 million cases and 28,600 people have died. The region has experienced a downward trend from a daily average of more than 15,000 cases in July to less than 4,000 in the past month. But in the past couple of weeks, this decline has slowed down to a plateau. As countries ease restrictions on movement, some increases in cases are expected, but preventing an exponential rise is absolutely critical. We can do this using public health capacities to find, test, isolate, and care for cases, and to trace and isolate their contacts. We all have a role to play in wearing masks, keeping a distance, and frequently washing our hands to protect ourselves and those around us from infection. Together, we can keep cases low and protect our communities. Finally, while much of our energy is focused on COVID-19, this Saturday, we will commemorate World Polio Day. This year, Africa was certified free of wild polio virus. And I once again congratulate and thank the governments, the communities, 
and partners for your tireless commitment towards achieving this goal. The fight is not over and vaccination campaigns remain critical to end all forms of polio. Despite the COVID-19 pandemic, 35 million children have been vaccinated across 13 African countries since campaigns resumed in July. This is really remarkable, and it shows that health service delivery in other areas can be sustained by working together with determination, innovation, and solidarity, despite the context of this pandemic. 